Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. The Bold and the Beautiful Monday, November 11 Recap Brooke asks if Taylor still wants Ridge Electra's press release panic. The Bold and the Beautiful, B&B and &B. Spoilers Recap for Monday, November 11 Reveals that Katie Logan, Heather Tom, told Steffi Forrester, Jacqueline Mithsinswood, and Ridge Forrester, Thorsten K. They had to coordinate their response over Hope Logan's Annika Noel, firing since no comment would only invite more questions. Katie wanted to avoid talk of interpersonal conflict, but Steffi argued the conflict was over now that Hope was gone. Rich said they'd circle back to this, so they all moved on by discussing the jewelry line relaunch with Ivy Forrester, Ashley Brewer, and Electra Forrester, Linnea Grace. Electra seemed unsettled when she heard the news about a press release for the upcoming event. Although Electra insisted Ivy should get all the credit, Steffi, Ridge, and Will Spencer, Crew Morrow, were confused over why she didn't want to be part of the rollout. Electra claimed putting her name in photo made her seem more important than she was, but Steffi pointed out it was too late to change the campaign anyway. Rich said Electra was going to be in the spotlight and urged her to enjoy the moment. Later, Steffi spoke to Ridge alone and pointed out that two foresters coming on board would take the sting out of ending Hope's line. Steffi once again pushed Ridge not to listen to Brooke Logan, Catherine Kelly Lang, and defended her decision regarding Hope. Adil Giardino will treated Electra to lunch and got her gratitude since he was the first friend she'd made in Los Angeles. After Will played up the press release, he said Electra would soon be a big part of Forrester for all the world to see. After Electra talked about wanting to start a new chapter, Will expressed curiosity about why she was so reluctant to be included in the press release earlier. Elsewhere, a man dressed in black looked at the press release online. Although his face wasn't shown yet, it was obvious that he was focusing on Electra's name and photo. At the Cliff House on Monday's B&B &B episode, Brooke stopped by and argued with Taylor Hayes, Rebecca Buttig, about whether it was fair of Steffi to fire Hope. Brooke obviously didn't think so, but Taylor felt that Steffi had every right to do what she did. However, Brooke eventually admitted there was another reason for her visit since she wanted to see how Taylor was doing. After Brooke said she read more about broken heart syndrome, Taylor realized she was concerned about her. Although they weren't really friends, Brooke acknowledged that she wanted to see Taylor healthy and happy. Taylor insisted she was feeling healthier and happier every day before praising Ridge for helping her navigate things. Brooke got updates on Taylor continuing to see Chandra, Mikiti Gandhi, the healer, so she hoped Ridge wasn't part of her sessions now. Since Brooke was still upset over finding Taylor in Ridge's lap, Taylor explained that it was a very intense, intimate moment. After Taylor discussed how cathartic it was, she said all the resentment and disappointment in her life just fell away. Taylor and Ridge were very present with each other, so that allowed them to give into the moment for the first time in a long time. Once Taylor said they were just following their hearts, she added that she'd learned a lot lately. Taylor had shut herself off before, but now she had a greater appreciation for listening to what her heart was telling her. Since Taylor thought she was dying, that really shook her up. Taylor was thankful that Ridge had been there every step of the way and gave her the courage to connect with her heart again. Brooke wondered what this had to do with Ridge before asking if Taylor was still in love with him and if she still wanted him. The bold and the beautiful spoilers say Taylor and Brooke's rivalry will heat up even more in the coming weeks, so stick with us for more predictions on all the conflict. On Monday, November 11, The Bold and the Beautiful turned up the drama with Brooke and Taylor's tense face-off and a PR crisis for Electra Designs. Brooke faces off with Taylor. Does she still want Ridge? 
The episode began at Forrester Creations, where Brooke was pacing, agitated. She knew Ridge's renewed closeness to Taylor was unsettling, but needed to hear it directly from the woman herself. After some contemplation, Brooke picked up her phone and dialed Taylor. Meet me at the Forrester Mansion, she said, her voice cool and unwavering. When Taylor arrived at the mansion, she immediately sensed the tension. The setting was intimate yet unyielding. Brooke had chosen the Forrester family's hallowed ground as the backdrop for this confrontation, almost as if she were channeling all her history with Ridge into that moment. The two women stood face to face, the past and present of Ridge Forrester's life, both equally powerful and sure of their claims to him. Brooke didn't waste any time on pleasantries. I want to ask you something, Taylor, she said, her gaze piercing. Taylor, always poised, responded with a small smile, as if she already knew where this conversation was headed. Go ahead, Brooke. Ask. Do you still want Ridge? Brooke's questions sliced through the air, heavy with the weight of decades of rivalry and heartache. Taylor's face remained stoic, but a flicker of emotion danced in her eyes. What I want, Brooke, is a peaceful life, for myself and for my children. If that means staying away from Ridge, then yes, I can do that, Taylor said evenly. But can you say the same? Because we both know he's torn between us, even if he won't admit it. Brooke's confidence faltered, and Taylor seized the opportunity. The truth is, Ridge will always love us both, Brooke. You can fight it, but it doesn't change anything. Brooke's frustration grew visible, her voice rising with her emotions. I don't want to fight, Taylor, but I won't stand by while you try to rekindle something with him. Our marriage has had enough interruptions and setbacks because of you. Taylor's reply was calm, cutting through Brooke's words with chilling clarity. You're angry because Rich finally sees the flaws in your perfect love story. But that's his choice, Brooke. Just remember that. The two women stared each other down, their complicated love triangle with Rich stretching out before them like an invisible, shared burden. Brooke, unwilling to cede any ground, declared, This isn't over, Taylor. Ridge and I belong together. But Taylor's unspoken response was unmistakable. Do you? As the women parted, it was clear that the battle lines were once again drawn. This confrontation had only intensified the rivalry. Both women now knew exactly where they stood, and Ridge's future was more uncertain than ever. Electra Designs faces a PR crisis. Across town, Electra Designs was dealing with a crisis of its own. The upscale fashion brand, a recent Forrester business partner, had just launched a new campaign starring the up-and-coming model, Allegra. But as Electra's PR team watched social media, their excitement turned to panic. Overnight, a scandal had erupted. An old video of Allegra, making questionable remarks about the industry, had surfaced and was quickly going viral. The CEO, Marissa Electra, gathered her team in a meeting room at Forrester Creations, where she'd been hoping to consult with Ridge and Steffi. This isn't just a bad look for Allegra, it's an attack on our brand, Marissa said, a hint of desperation in her tone. Steffi, a skilled marketer herself, tried to reassure her. We've handled scandals before. Let's first figure out our approach before we act. But Marissa wasn't easily calmed. This could ruin the entire line before we've even properly launched. We're being accused of endorsing someone who has no respect for the industry or for the designers behind the creations. While they brainstormed damage control options, Ridge entered the room, visibly distracted from his earlier encounter with Brooke. Seeing Marissa's panic, he immediately shifted into problem-solving mode. What are we working with here? Can we contain it? He asked, assessing the situation with the calm of a man who had handled more than his share of Forrester PR nightmares. Marissa explained Allegra's past comments, 
and the brand's association with her. Reach listened intently, nodding as he absorbed the details. We need a message that separates us from Allegra's opinions. Electra Design stands for respect in this industry and always has, he said, meeting Varissa's gaze. But we need more than a statement. We need a visual to reassert the integrity of this line. Steffi's eyes lit up with an idea. What if we launch a mini campaign on social media with our longtime models? We can spotlight stories about their experience, how much they love working with Electra and Forrester. Marissa's expression brightened. That's brilliant, Steffi. But we'll need them on board immediately. And we'll have to sideline Allegra, at least for now. As they all nodded in agreement, Steffi set off to contact their most respected models. Soon the models began posting personal testimonials and behind-the-scenes glimpses, showcasing the trust and care that had always defined their partnerships. The message was clear. Electra Designs valued the talent and artistry that went into every creation, and they wouldn't allow one model's mistakes to tarnish their brand. Meanwhile, Brooke, who was in another part of Forrester Creations, recovering from her confrontation with Taylor, noticed the flurry of activity surrounding Electra's crisis. She couldn't help but feel a pang of admiration watching Steffi in her element, decisive, compassionate, and resolute. Like father, like daughter, she thought. Ridge and Brooke, a new dispute arises. As the day wound down, Brooke sought out Ridge, eager to discuss the incident with Taylor. She found him in his office, pouring over a stack of designs, his brow furrowed. Ridge, she said, closing the door softly behind her. We need to talk about Taylor. Ridge looked up, clearly exhausted. Brooke, can we save this for later? Today's been long. But Brooke's resolve was stronger than Ridge's weariness. She still has feelings for you, Ridge. She as much as admitted it. Ridge exhaled, placing his hands on the desk. Brooke, Taylor is a big part of my life. She's the mother of my children, and we're always going to have a connection. But that doesn't mean I want to jeopardize what we have. Brooke crossed her arms, her gaze unyielding. I'm not asking you to ignore her, Ridge, but I need to know where we stand. Because as long as she's around, I don't feel secure. Ridge's face softened as he took Brooke's hands. I love you, Brooke. And yes, I love Taylor too. But it's not the same kind of love. Can you accept that? Brooke, conflicted, held his gaze. I'll try, Ridge. But Taylor isn't just going to disappear, and neither is my fear of losing you. As Ridge pulled her into a tight embrace, Brooke knew that despite his reassurances, her heart would never fully rest while Taylor lingered in their lives. Electra's crisis averted. Later, Marissa and Steffi reconvened to assess the impact of their rapid response campaign. To their relief, the crisis had been contained. Fans of the brand rallied around the new posts, expressing renewed loyalty and admiration for Electra's commitment to the industry. I couldn't have done this without you, Steffi, Marissa said, hugging her. Forrester Creations is lucky to have you. Steffi, always humble in victory, simply smiled. Anytime, Marissa, we're in this together. As the episode closed, Forrester Creations had survived yet another storm. But for Brooke, Taylor, and Ridge, their storm was just beginning. The age-old love triangle had resurfaced, stronger than ever, with Brooke and Taylor each more determined than ever to win Ridge's heart.